Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and heard the top stories we are tracking for you on Wednesday, the 12th of June. Fresh clashes in Jammu and Kashmir, security forces counter terrorists in Doda and Katwa. Two more Indians killed in Russia-Ukraine war bringing toll to four. And Bangladesh court index lone Nobel laureate in money laundering case. Now for all the details. An encounter was underway in Doda district of India's Jammu and Kashmir a day after a security check post was attacked by terrorists in Chhatragala area on Tuesday night. The gunfight which injured six security personnel including a SDPO began after terrorists opened fire at a joint check post of Jammu and Kashmir police and Rashtri rifles at an army base in Doda district. Similarly, a separate operation was underway in Hiranagar village in Katua district where terrorists opened fire at a house in the village. Police said in the ensuing gunfight, two terrorists were neutralized by the forces while one CRPF personnel was also killed in action. A senior police official informed the terrorists were likely non-locals infiltrated from Pakistan. A search operation was still underway in the area till the last reports came in. These incidents come just days after terrorists attacked a bus carrying Hindu pilgrims in Raisi district of Jammu and Kashmir, killing at least 10 and injuring 33 others. Defense experts have blamed they are being orchestrated by Pakistan in the region, which has largely been peaceful to show that there is no peace and tranquility in the Jammu and Kashmir. The reason is very clear. Pakistan wants to tell the world that there has been no peace and tranquility in Jammu and Kashmir as claimed by the government of India. There was a huge participation in the recent elections. Pakistan wants to say that all that notwithstanding, situation is not okay and that Jammu Kashmir remains a disputed area. India's foreign ministry in a statement on Tuesday informed that two more Indian citizens have been killed in the Russia-Ukraine war bringing the number of such deaths to at least four. India has asked Russia not to recruit Indian nationals and sought early release and return of those who are with the Russian army. While there have been reports that about 100 Indians have been recruited by the Russian army, the Indian government admitted in February that 20 of them were in touch with the Indian embassy, seeking to return home. Earlier, Sri Lanka also demanded the same from Russia that it should stop recruiting its citizens to fight in the war. Reports suggest at least 16 Sri Lankan ex-soldiers have been killed in the conflict so far. Moving on, former government employees in POJK staged a demonstration recently to demand a hike in their pensions. They accused the Pakistan government of being apathetic towards their plight amid rising inflation. A report. Scores of former government employees and pensioners in Pakistan-occupied Jammu and Kashmir held a sit-in protest recently to demand a raise in their pensions from the Pakistan government. The protesters lamented it has become difficult to manage household expenses amid soaring inflation. But Islamabad has remained apathetic towards their plight. They said they have held several demonstrations over the past one year, but no official has come forward to even hear their pleas. ये बात हकीकत पे मबनी है कि वजीर आजम आजाद कश्मीर अपनी तरफ से कोई छलान नहीं कर सकते ये जो मुराद पेंशन की हुकूमत पाकिस्तान ने दे दी और उनका बजट इनको दे दिया गया है उसके लिए मैं सदीक शाह साहब से अपने जनरल सेक्रेटरी फरमान साहब से और रमजान मुखर साहब से ये गुजारिश करना चाहता हूं कि पांच वजरा का लाभ के काले इजलास में थे आप उनके पास जाएं उन्हें कहें कि ये हमारे बुजुर्गों के जो पैसे हैं इनको फौरी तौर पर रिलीज किया जाए पीछे आज जो जिस बुजुर्ग को बात करो तो एकदम मतलब वो दम दबाकर भागने की कोशिश करेगा वो ये कहता है कि बस मुझसे कोई ना पूछ रहे मैं किसी को कुछ ना बता दूं ये अब ये सूरत हाल जो हमारे सामने है उसको हम देखो रोडों पर बैठे हुए बूढ़े बैठे हुए हैं हमें दुनिया गुजरने वाली देख रही है हमारे कुरानों को यह याद नहीं आ रहा यह ख्याल नहीं आ रहा है ना इनको सुनने से ये कह देते हैं अगर इनकी बात जायज़ है इसको की जाए अगर इनकी बात नाजायज है इनको मुतमिन किया जाए बाबा ये आपका मामला दुरुस्त नहीं है इसको इस तरह दुरुस्त करें दी प्रोटेस्ट इज ब्लेम्ड इन स्टेड ऑफ प्रोवाइडिंग एनी एड टू दीपल इन दैकवर्ड रीजन इकनॉमिक लॉसेज फेस्ड बाई पाकिस्तान 
due to policy paralysis are also being compensated from territories under its illegal control. And after fleeing the Taliban, Afghan refugee beagle Maniza Talash is ready to shine at the Paris Olympics where breaking will be featured for the first time. Take a look. 21-year-old Afghan beagle Maniza Talash is practicing her craft. She will be among the first athletes to compete in breaking at the Olympics when it debuts in Paris this summer. The competitive form of breakdancing blends artistry and dance with acrobatic moves, something Talash says she would never have been able to do in her native Afghanistan. Si yo estuve en Afghanistan, no, no vive. Porque los talibanes no le gustan este deporte que estoy haciendo. Y es muy peligroso para mí y para mi familia. Pero estoy aquí que hago, no que tengo miedo. Talash was once the only woman on a 56-member breaking crew in Kabul. As the word spread about Afghanistan's first B-girl, she says she faced opposition and even death threats. Once the Taliban took control in 2021, music and dancing considered un-Islamic were outlawed. Since then, most women and girls have also been barred from high school and universities. This prompted her to leave. She spent her year in Pakistan before being granted refugee status in Spain. In early 2024, with the help of some friends, the refugee Olympic team found Talash and secured her spot in Paris. Para las chicas que están en Afganistán es muy difícil hacer todas las cosas. Por ejemplo, salir de casa o estudiar porque no pueden hacer nada. Pero yo estoy feliz que estoy aquí y ahora quiero hacer algo para mis eh, personas que están en Afganistán, mis chicas, mis amigas. Entonces eh, es muy difícil, pero yo quiero hacer, no quiero solo decir. Moving on. A Bangladesh court on Wednesday indicted the country's only Nobel laureate, Muhammad Yunus, and his 13 other associates in a case regarding the embezzlement of around $2.1 million of the Grameen Telecom Workers' Welfare Fund, Bangladesh news agency UNB has reported. Yunus, a pioneer of the global microcredit movement, has been accused by the authorities of breaking labor regulations, a case he says is politically motivated. Yunus, who had unsuccessfully floated a political party in 2007, has been at loggerheads with Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina. In a recent interview with Reuters, he lamented that Bangladesh has turned into a one-party state under Hasina, who stamps out any political competition in the country. His supporters say Hasina's government has sought to discredit him because he once considered setting up a political party. However, the government has refuted the claims with Law Minister Anisul Haq calling the remarks as an insult to the people of the country. Well, Bangladesh doesn't have any politics left. I mean, uh, there's only one party who is active and uh, occupy everything, do everything get to the elections uh, in their way. Uh, they get their people elected in many different forms uh, with a uh, proper candidate and dummy candidate, independent candidate, but all from the same party. Politics disappeared from the country. How do you restart it? That's the issue. Restarting will be very painful because you, we have brought the politics in a point where uh, it completely disappeared. Sri Lankan opposition leader Sajit Premadasa has said that his party will enact implementation of the 13th Amendment and also claimed that people have become addicted to the false promises made by the politicians. Speaking during an event, he said his party will ensure all civil and economic rights of the people. President Ranil Vikramasinghe has said that he is agreeable to full implementations of the 13th Amendment, accept police powers. Vikramasenge said new police legislation would need to be introduced before police powers are dissolved to the provinces. The president also said Sri Lanka must either retain its provincial councils with powers adequately devolved as provided for by the 13th Amendment to the constitution or abolish the PC system entirely. The full implementation of the 13th Amendment continues to be a point of debate. It emerged from the controversial Indo-Lankan Accord of 1987 as a purported solution to the worsening ethnic conflict four years after war broke out.
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.